Welcome back. I'm in Rwanda, and now that I've had my fill of animals... Do you think he can feel how much I want to pet him? <laughs> He's like, don't. I'll bite you in half. It's time to hit the capital city, Kigali. This bustling metropolis is home to 1.2 million people. There's sugar cane. Mm. Oh god, I'm doing this wrong. The taxis here are motorcycles. Whee! And most importantly, there's very little COVID. While around 10% of the US's population contracted COVID, only about 0.3% of Rwanda's population did. And while we've been hoarding vaccines and haven't made a coordinated effort to vaccinate asylum seekers, Rwanda has been trying to vaccinate everyone equitably, including refugees. <laughs> So it doesn't upset you that you have refugees in this country? No, it can't upset me. Even my parents were one-time refugees. Okay. Most of Rwandans who survived the genocide were refugees. So when you think about refugees, you don't feel like you need to take your country back from them or like accuse them of being criminals in your midst? No, I am not Ted Cruz. Oh my God, I knew I loved this place for a reason. And the reason people here don't get hot and bothered about refugees Good morning. Good morning. is because many people in Rwanda were refugees. Colonialism and imperialism laid a groundwork of instability that led to conflict that led to, well, a near constant flow of refugees back and forth across the Rwandan border. Folks here understand that being a refugee is just a circumstance of life, not a value judgment. Case in point, this place. Gashora is a refugee camp of sorts. Every refugee here has been vaccinated and oh! Oh, there's music here. Wow, I really can't clap. Anyway, this is Dana Hughes. She works for the UNHCR, the organization that runs, well, what exactly is this place? This is an ETM. It's an emergency transit mechanism. What is the difference between an ETM and a refugee camp? An ETM is for transit mm -hmm. and for emergencies. It really is a place where people are only supposed to be for a few months. Refugee camps are not also supposed to be forever, but the average person can be in a camp for over a decade. Can I stay here if all I'm doing is fleeing a culture war? <laughs> I'll take that as a yes. We often say at UNHCR, refugees are just like you and me. But in Rwanda, the population knows that and feels that. And really, it's also reflective of a general kind of African hospitality spirit. So why is there uh, this common misconception that Africa is only a place that creates problems and creates refugees? Why is there that yeah. misconception yeah. that Africa is a place? Mm -hmm. It's OK. You don't have to say it. I got this. People at Gashora are the survivors of some of the world's most horrific circumstances, like perilous conditions in Libya or the war in Eritrea. But when they get here, it's time to think about the future. This is Lula Tensa. She keeps this place together. You're like the sheriff of this <laughs> camp. You do everything. I would say daytime mayor and nighttime sheriff. So tell me, what makes this place special? The people that come in here uh, are very traumatized people. Mm -hmm. But come in here, they see there's a future. Uh -huh. There's life for them. There's hope. So what are the types of things that people can do here? The guys, they love playing soccer. There's driving school. And there's also language classes. I don't want to brag, but I speak both American and Canadian, so. And the point of these classes is to prepare refugees for being resettled. Do you know where you are going? France. What? No, no, no. You're going to Norway. Canada. It's Canada. Canada. You know, family Canadian, I'm like. That's where I'm from. Ah, yes, France, Norway, Canada, and Canada, AKA the axis of generosity. These countries are, no surprise, taking in the most refugees from this ATM, while the US is too busy deciding if it will even allow people with side parts to stay. And sure, things like driving school are fine, but I wanted to make sure that these soon-to-be Canadian Norwegian Frenchies were ready for what's really important, like where to get a good cup of coffee. You're gonna need to know this name, okay? Tim? Tim. Hortons. You have to order a double double. <laughs> double cream, double sugar. Local cuisine. Do you know anything about Norway? No. Well, you need to like to eat fish. They just love hearing car traditions. If you sit in a car with a comedian, you have to sing karaoke. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, okay. I shine bright like a diamond. Shine bright like a diamond. Doo ba doo, doo ba doo. Have to fit a white country. Okay. And of course, just how to fit in. When you say something in Canadian, you have to say a at the end. 
You have to say, my name is Hadia, eh? I'm Canadian, eh? How's it going, eh? And with these skills acquired, he wants to fish. Look at, you're ready for Norway. <laughs> I couldn't help but wonder what their selfish motivations were for resettling in these countries to begin with. What do you think life will be like there? Ugh, we don't deserve this generation, which makes what I have to say next even harder. While President Biden technically lifted the refugee cap set under Trump, he has made clear that the U.S. likely won't admit many more people. How does the UNHCR feel about that? We are really happy for the U.S. generosity in, in general, and we're looking okay. forward to... Looking forward to things changing. Yes. Always proud to hear. Americans are doing the bare minimum. I mean, they announced it. It's just, it's gonna take a minute. It's gonna take a minute. President Joe Biden. Come on, Joe, we have plenty of vaccines, food, and space galore. I mean, who's even been to South Dakota? So let's tear a page out of Rwanda's playbook and welcome people like Hadia, Milian, and Mahari, even if they don't like my singing. Mm -hmm. So good. Uh, it's so good. Aw, thanks for watching. If you'd like to hear more from Full Frontal, hit subscribe and visit our page for more videos. Or if you'd like to be radicalized, leave YouTube on autoplay.